pose, right? Now let's do tree pose. So let's carefully breathe. There is something interesting happening here. A connection between body and brain, healing and hope. A challenge to try something new to break through. I can touch this one. A challenge to get even those who may hesitate a bit at first to open up to the possibilities. I know it's like yoga and stuff. It kind of bores me a little bit, but yeah. I, I use it too, so. Uses it too. And although yoga may not be his thing right now, he is discovering new tools that are working for him. You know, usually you need to use it to calm down and stuff, so I do that. Like, How? Like Give me an example of that. Uh, so, you know, they say, like, just count or just, really, I just sit by myself and, you know, do my own thing to calm down. But sometimes I use those two with, like, mudras, though. Challenging himself to take control over his life. Like, especially when people have, like me, I have a little bit of anger management issues, so. Whenever I get really angry, I have to like sit down, take a second to myself to like chill out and just, you know, be in my own space with things. So I think that's really how it should be used, but that's not mine to tell. This is Challenge to Change. Jordan Turner, I'm a Yoga in the Schools instructor for Challenge to Change. We uh, provide preventative social and emotional tools um, that connect the mind, body, and breath um, for students to have just self-regulating tools and then we also give them to educators as well so they can start to be more preventative for not just educators but also their students too. I was an educator myself at Jefferson Elementary so a Title I building, um, very high trauma with students and I just felt like I was kind of getting to that burnout stage myself and I was trying to give these tools to so many students so now being able to be working full-time for Challenge Change as their Yoga in the Schools director to give these tools to more students is just absolutely incredible. And we're seeing, I mean, we're going to be in some schools, this will be our fifth year in some schools, and that just says enough itself that these tools are working not just for students, but for educators as well. Educators like Tiffany. I am Tiffany Steverson, and I am the SEBH innovator um, for the district. It's so exciting and fulfilling to see a student access a skill that they're going to be able to generalize across all settings, whether this be in the community, in athletics, um, in, within their home, um, and then throughout not only their school career, but into adulthood, understanding how to manage our emotions and regulate our bodies and, and respond and, and interact with each other. Um, so to see at such a young age, then pull these skills up, it's excitement because I know how much this is gonna benefit you. And not only are you accessing academic achievement, but you're accessing opportunity and potential um, that's gonna open these doors for you just to be successful in life. 30 minute lessons focusing on five key areas is the mudras, so the seated practice to where they kind of just have that self-awareness piece, that self-management to where they can take a few breaths, kind of name on how they're feeling. And then we always do a movement piece. So that's kind of where the yoga comes in. Um, we get up and we move our bodies in a mindful way. And then we always have what's called the heart of the lesson. So that's like the objective or the I can statement. What do we want students to get out of it? It can be relationship building skills, community skills, um, more self-management techniques, those preventative skills. The yoga nap, the guided mindfulness practice where students are lying on their back so they can be in their chair and that's just kind of where they're able to just shut their eyes for a minute, um, listen to a guided visualization to just kind of be present and to be mindful. And then the last part is the close of practice. So that's where we bring them up from that relaxed state of mind to the focused state of mind. So we usually say like mantras here. So like we always say, Sata Nama and it means I am awesome. And they say it 15 times because we always say if you say something over and over again then you start to change those neural pathways in your brain to where you can start to say more positive things to yourself. I am strong. It is working for this student too. So you take your two fingers and you just put them on your lap and you breathe three times. The Eastern Iowa Mental Health and Disability Region is making the program available at more and more schools. Christine has been working toward days like this for years. We really need to be able to teach our littles to calm um, and give them the skills that they need to face what's a pretty challenging world out there right now. Using the latest research to offer a new approach. 
in particular what Challenge to Change brings, it's the how. Um, but before the how, you have to understand the why and understand the brain-based connections and how um, when our students are in their smart thinking brain um, and when we have um, our students in a place where they have, they're regulated, they can access that prefrontal cortex. Um, and in doing that and, and educating our educators and how imperative it is to have those, um, those brain-based connections, then Challenge to Change content comes in and it's this is how we regulate them. And so it's just a matter of, um, I think, rolling out, understanding, learning, professional development, um, and then having such a platform that's ready and willing to offer the how has been really beneficial for us. Principal Kevin Turner sees the results firsthand. It's crucial. It's something that um, it's completely necessary. Um, we build it into our daily schedule, K through six, um, every single day. Um, we take pieces of it and we actually have a separate SEL block. It's called squad time every day. We make sure that pieces from Challenge to Change curriculum is within our um, squad time every single day for all grades. It, the coolest part about it is it doesn't matter what grade. Um, it's, it's for all levels and it's for all learners. Um, it's completely equitable. Um, it's completely culturally responsive. It's um, within the music, within the lessons, and it's engaging, as you kind of saw, and you saw what the instructors are like too. They make it engaging for um, all the kids and the staff too, and I think um, it's just a positive for our kids and it's a way for them to help um, cope with all the extra things they have going on, um, the trauma that they bring in every single day. And um, it's just, again, it's an engaging way to kind of teach them those social emotional skills that they really need. Each year, going into even more schools, learning themselves along the way. We write the curriculum each year, so we know that education's changing. So as we're teaching one curriculum, we're writing the next year. So we're staying relevant, we're staying culturally responsive, trauma-informed, all of those things to keep our curriculum within schools the best that it can. So to see that it builds each year on their um, coping skills and how they manage the world around them um, is, is just amazing. Giving the next generation hope in a pose, a breath, a positive thought, for a better tomorrow. You hope that other kids, maybe if not you, take some of these other tools and maybe it can make their life better? Yes, because it can help other kids with their problems, you know, so that they don't have overly extreme emotions. Sometimes we just need to find ways to, to chill ourselves out and to steady things, huh? Mm -hmm. It's kind of cool to see that this is being taught in schools now. Yeah, I think it's really going to help out with a lot of people. So. This is Challenge to Change.